Good afternoon. Welcome to our celebration of the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Our main presider is Reverend Father Leo Distor, together with Reverend Father John Layden and Reverend Father Chris Kaamini. Please all stand and let us begin our celebration as we sing our gathering hymn. So mindful of God's loving sacrifice for us and for our salvation, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his death, he became bread for the life of the world. May his abundant life be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome into our celebration of this Mass of the Lord's Supper. We welcome all those who are joining us in this Mass uh, through online. My dear sisters and brothers, with the liturgy of the Lord's Supper, we enter into the final days of Holy Week. This is the evening when Jesus gave the new commandment, love one another, and prayed for the unity of those who believe in Him. This is the evening when Jesus showed himself as the servant of God by washing the feet of his disciples. And this is the evening when Jesus gave us the Eucharist to be celebrated forever in his memory. Reliving the words and actions of the Lord Jesus, we now share his thoughts, his feelings, and his love which brought us salvation. Lord Jesus, 
Lord and Master, you emptied yourself, taking the condition of a slave. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, the great high priest, you offered your life in sacrifice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, beloved of the Father, you love your disciples until the end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into life everlasting. Amen. God, in the fullness of time, you revealed your love in Jesus the Lord. 
on the eve of his death as a sign of your covenant, he washed the feet of his disciples and gave himself as food and drink. Give us life at this sacred banquet and joy in humble service, so that, united to Christ in all things, we may become more loving and more life-giving. Grant this through him who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. You may choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a one-year-old male without any defects. Then, on the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, the whole community of Israel will kill the animals. The people are to take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and over the doors of the houses in which the animals are to be eaten. That night, the meat is to be roasted over the fire and eaten with bitter herbs and with bread made without yeast. You are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel, with your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honor me, the Lord. On that night, I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. You must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. Celebrate it for all time to come. When you enter the land that the Lord has promised to give you, you must perform this ritual. When your children ask you, what does this ritual mean? You will answer, it is the sacrifice of Passover to honor the Lord because he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. He struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The cup of blessing that we bless is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf of bread, all of us, though many, are one single body, for we all share in the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, 
son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. You will never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and returned to the table, Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We invite everyone for a moment of reflection. you love 
So today, we begin the Triduum, the three most important days in the liturgical year of the Church. And they are the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. These uh, three days are to be seen as one celebration that the suffering and death of Jesus on Good Friday gives meaning to the victory of resurrection on Easter. And there will be no resurrection without the passion and death of Jesus in the Good Friday. But this year's Holy Thursday is a different celebration, or we might ask, is this really a celebration, a happy event? This is Holy Thursday where the Mass is done online because people cannot come to church. This is the Mass of the Lord's Supper, not in the evening, but in a broad daylight. People cannot go to churches for visita iglesia, no visiting of the altar of repose in different churches. And this is a repeat of what happened last year at the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. But if we go back to our first reading long time ago, this had already happened during the Passover when the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt to tell the community of Israel to stay at home, gather as a family, eat together, slaughter a lamb as a sacrifice, and apply the blood of the lamb to the doorposts then they will share meal together the roasted flesh of the lamb that as long as they are inside of the house and with the cross of the blood of the lamb at the doorposts when the angel of death passes i your god will save you no sinasabi ng dios ako ang magliligtas sa inyo it is the feast of the Passover that Jesus gathered his disciples at table for a meal. But it was not an ordinary meal. It was a Passover meal wherein the Jewish people would recall the wondrous deed or works of Yahweh in bringing them out of slavery in Egypt into freedom in the promised land. It is in this meal, the Lord's Supper, or the Last Supper, that Jesus has shown His love by giving food to His people. And Jesus was not just giving them food. Jesus Himself is the food. Holding the bread, He said, This is my body. Eat it. And holding the cup filled with wine, He said, This is my blood. Drink it. He is there to tell them how much He loves them, how much He cares for them. Why did Jesus decide to make Himself just simple bread and ordinary wine? The answer is very clear because He loves us so much. He loved them to the end. He even promised, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. He humbled and emptied himself from being God. He became human being, and from being man, he became just simple bread and wine. So at the Last Supper, he instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist. Holy Thursday, then, is the feast also of the sacrament of the Eucharist. In this sacrament, we experience the love of God for humankind. For we receive the greatest gift He can ever give us, the very body and blood of His beloved Son. Furthermore, in the Eucharist, we make present the one sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Although 
he instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper, it cannot be reduced to a meal. What Jesus instituted was entirely new and different reality, and that is his sacrifice on the cross that he commanded us to repeat. Indeed, the celebration of this Mass of the Last Supper would be about the institution of the Eucharist, and yet we have this strange kind of beginning as well. Jesus, having told his disciples how much he loved them and longed to be with them, he takes off his outer garment and goes outside and brings in the bowl with which the servants wash the feet of those who come to the banquet. Jesus washing their feet. And Jesus comes back with the water and he kneels down in front of each of them and begins to wash their feet. And this job is given to the lowest of the lowest slave. And it comes to St. Peter who sees his Lord and Master degrading himself in this way and he says to him, you are not going to wash my feet. But Jesus says, Peter, if you do not let me wash your feet, you will never know who I am. And you can have nothing to do with me because you will never understand. And then Jesus proceeds one after the other, washing their feet, drying their feet. And finally, he goes back, puts on his garment and says to them, Do you know what I have done to you? This is a very good question for us to reflect upon. Do you know what God has done to you? And further, Jesus said, You call me Lord and Master, and that's what I am. I am your Lord and I am your Master, but I have washed your feet. I do this because you will never know who I am until you wash each other's feet. This is the true meaning of Eucharist. This is the meaning of why Jesus, the Son of God, came down to share our humanity that we might share in an understanding of the great dignity that God has given us and the great gift that He continues to give us each day. How can the Son of God kneel down in front of this man who in a very, very short time will all run away from him when he needs them most. When he kneels down, what does Jesus see? He sees the humanity of all of them. Jesus sees our humanity. And Jesus loves them in a human way. We are loved. But Jesus also sees the presence of God. He knows that each one has been formed individually, particularly out of the greatness and glory of God. And each one, each one is worthy of respect because not for what he is, but what he has become when God created him in his own image and in his own likeness. And what Jesus is really doing is telling the truth of who they really are. They are not even in the most remote way, even near an understanding of the greatness of being the children, no. being the sons and daughters, those made in the image of a loving father. And it is now Jesus who pays homage at this time. And that's what he says. If you cannot see in me and, and what I do here and why I do it, you cannot be my disciple. Because... What he is saying is, a disciple, in response to the love of God, serves other people. It's the same story. Each and every one of us, my dear sisters and brothers, no matter what we have done or how we behave or what we do with the treasures, with the gifts and talents that God has given us, use them well or use them poorly, we are indeed the precious children of God. 
in our dignity, in our feeling, in the great gifts that God gives us, we must first recognize in ourselves. And I said to myself, now, like this is what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. He was trying to tell them that you are not fishermen. You're not just ordinary people. Because when I look at you, I see what you really are. I look at the depths of your hearts. I know when you weep and I know when you laugh. And I know the storms about your life. I know the troubles you have and I know your dreams, your aspirations. And this is what they must understand. That he is sending them out now to look at other people in the same way that Jesus looks at them. The teaching then of the gospel is that we must, as Jesus once said to his disciples and to the people of his time, that you have eyes to see, but you are blind. You have ears to hear, but you are deaf. You have hearts to love, but you don't. And because of that, the great mystery in each other, the great mystery in us, is lost. What Jesus is saying to them is when you learn how to serve, you will learn how to live. And when you learn to love others, you will understand truly what love is. And when you learn to give happiness and joy to people, you will understand what it means to be happy and full of joy. And the lesson, of course, is this. Jesus washes feet. God washes feet. And until we learn to wash feet, to serve others, no conditions, no counting the cost, but to learn to serve others, then we will know that it is God who washes our feet. And it is God's Son who dies on a cross for us. And the real meaning of it all is Will we ever learn to love as Jesus loves? Will we ever realize that we are sur surrounded by the great mystery and love of God who is with us all our days? And the way we understand it is by turning to each other and saying, let me care for you. Let me serve you. Let me help you. And this is a great call for us this time of crisis, not just here in our country, but all over the world. And this is the lesson of this day. It is also the lesson of tomorrow. And it is the lesson of new life. For Jesus says, he who gives life away will have life in abundance. Please all stand. So we have come together to celebrate the love of God made known in Jesus Christ, His Son. We pray that this love may spread throughout the world. Our response is, Sanctify your people, Lord. Sanctify your people, Lord. Out of love for us, Jesus offered his life. As we offer our lives in union with him, may we bring in prayer the pains, joys, and hopes of all humanity. We pray. Sanctify your people, Lord. On this day, when Jesus called people to the ministry of presiding at Eucharist, we pray that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop, Jose Cardinal Advincula, and all the clergy will always remain faithful in their priestly ministry. We pray. Sanctify your people, Lord. Christ, give us an example of humility and service. May those in authority choose to serve rather than be served. We pray. 
sanctify your people, Lord. For peace throughout the world, we remember especially those suffering from the effects of war in the Holy Land, in Syria, here in the Philippines, and in all troubled spots of the world. We pray. Sanctify your people, Lord. That all people will be protected from the continuous spread of the coronavirus in different variants, and that the supply of a truly safe and effective vaccine will be sufficient and accessible to all. We pray. Sanctify your people, Lord. In a brief moment of silence, let us also offer our own prayers. For all this, we pray. Sanctify your people, Lord. Father of mercy, hear our prayers as we celebrate the passion and death of Jesus. Bring us to the glory of his resurrection. In all this, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Yesterday, Holy Wednesday, in the Manila Cathedral, His Excellency Bishop Broderick Pabilio Didi consecrated the oils to be used in the celebration of the sacraments in the Archdiocese of the rest of the year. Our response in every prayer is, Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. The Holy Chrism. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The oil of the sick. May the sick who are anointed with this oil of healing experience the love and compassion of Christ and be restored to health and wholeness. Blessed be God forever. Please be seated. The bread. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to present, which earth has given and hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to present fruit of the vine and work of our hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
And let us now pray with your sisters and brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Father, mindful of your Son's command, we place before you this bread and wine, eager to recall the memory of your Son. He has shown us the path to life along which we too must walk. We prepare to break bread now at this table and to follow him wherever he leads. In all this we ask in the name of the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, O loving and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the true and eternal priest who established this unending sacrifice. He offered himself as a victim for our deliverance and taught us to make this offering in his memory. As we eat his body which he gave for us, we grow in strength. As we drink his blood which he poured out for us, we are washed clean. And now with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. rightly gives you praise. All life and holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure offering may be made to the glory of your name. We gather here before you and in communion with the whole church. We celebrate the most holy day our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for us. Through him whom you glorified, a Redeemer and our Savior, we humbly pray. By the power of your Spirit, sanctify these gifts we have brought before you, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was handed over to death, he said to his disciples, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. After he had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may give glory to you. I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that was mine before the world was made. Christ is the bread of life.
calling to mind, Lord God, the death your Son endured for our salvation, His glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of His return, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death, or by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let you make us an everlasting gift to you, that we may share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints in his constant intercession with your life for help. Lord, may the sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your premium church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, our bishop administrator, Broderick, all bishops and other ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family that you have gathered here before you in mercy and love. Unite all your children, whatever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory. To Christ our Lord, to whom you give the world everything that is good. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Before we share at the Lord's table, let us pray to the Father in the words that Jesus had taught us. Lord, from every evil and grant peace and unity to your church through the Eucharist, keep us free from sin and be our strength to enable us to overcome our anxieties and fears as we prepare for the final coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, on the eve of your death, you prayed for your apostles and for us when you said, Not only for this do I pray, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one, Father, even as you are in me and I in you. May they also be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Lord, grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. 
Amen. May the peace and joy of the risen Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of peace. Please kneel. O God, origin and sustainer of life, we ask that in the breaking of this bread, our eyes may be opened so that we may recognize the presence of your Son among us. The bread that we break, do we not share in the body of Christ when we eat this bread? Because there is the one bread, all of us, though many, are one body. For we all share the same loaf. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks to God, do we not share in the blood of Christ when we drink from this cup? This is the bread that come down from heaven. Whoever eats of this will never die. And this is the cup of eternal life. Whoever drinks of it will live forever. Come now and receive the body and blood of Christ. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
the jars containing the oil of prison and the oil of the sick that were blessed by Bishop Roderick Pabilio D.D. yesterday and presented during our celebration will now be carried to the baptistry and placed in the special cabinet that we call the Ambly. Announcement. All are invited to join our live stream online activities this Holy Week via our official Facebook page. On Good Friday, April 2, Laudato Si the Anang Cruz via Cruises at 8 a.m. Siete Palabras at 1 p.m. Celebration of the Lord's Passion at 3 p.m. After the Mass, there will be an online veneration of the Santo Entierro. We invite everyone to stay tuned tomorrow for a moment of reflection and prayer. On Holy Saturday, April 3, Tenebrae at 8 a.m., Easter Vigil Mass, the most important celebration of the year, pre-recorded live at 1 p.m., and repost at 6.30 p.m. April 4, the Resurrection of the Lord. The Easter Sunday Mass is at 8 a.m. and repost at 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Please all stand. Let us pray. Strong and faithful God, when your son Jesus gave himself to his friends as food and drink for the journey, he committed himself to be for us a person for others, the Lord who serves. Grant that our sharing in this sacrament of unity may fill us with a strong and unselfish love that will inspire us to work for the coming among us of the kingdom of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel while the ministers prepare for the possession of the Blessed Sacrament.
Oh, 
Our response is song. Body of Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. Body of Christ, sacrificed on the cross. Body of Christ, risen from the tomb. Blood of Christ, poured out for us. Blood of Christ shed on the cross. Blood of Christ flowing from his side. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High. Heart of Jesus, pierced with the lambs. Heart of Jesus, aflame with love for us. Living bread come down from heaven. Living word of the Father. Giver of the Holy Spirit. Bridegroom of the Church. Redeemer of the world. Friend of the young and the poor. When you come on the last day.